That's some term so. Anyway, any questions? All right, as far as the tools that we're going to need, I already set MySQL, which you guys should already know how to download and install. Typically, I have it installed in my C drive under MySQL, the version, MySQL 5.5. .5. I'm going to be using 5.5. .5. I know there's a 6 out there already. It's up to you if you want to use a 6. It might work, it might not work. I suggest you use the same tools that I use. So if you go into MySQL, which nowadays is property of Big Brother Oracle, Download the MySQL community server. That's the free stuff, right? And you can select the platform that you want to install it at. Windows or Linux or Mac. I don't care what laptop you use and then you can download, like for instance for Windows, you can download the installer which will make your MySQL database a service of your Windows so every time that you reboot it will be there and it will waste time loading it even though you want, you might not need it or you can down, just download the zip which is what I do I download the zip I have a 32-bit up um, machine so I download the 32-bit version of, of it and zip it on my C drive and that's it here it is my SQL 5.5.16 Win32 and then I go into the bin and execute my SQL D that's the daemon that's what the service, the Windows service will run every time that you will boot I just run it from the DOS prompt whenever I need it. That's it. First server that we're going to need done. Next, you guys, if you haven't done so, you guys have to download the Java Development Kit for JDK. So you will have to go again into Big Brother Oracle and download Java 6. I know there is a Java, probably Java 7 is out there already. I don't know if it works or not. I have tested mine on JDK 6. I know it works. And that's what I download and install. Again, it has a version for every single platform that you might have. Linux, Solaris, Windows, Mac. I think Mac already comes with it. The OS X. Anyway, for Windows, you have the 64-bit or the 32-bit. That's what I download. It is an executable because when you download it and execute it, it will create a program's file Java and then the specific version that you install, like in this. In my case, I downloaded the JDK 1.6 revision 27. So it will create this JDK 16027 folder inside Program Files Java. 
when you open it, you will see that it has a bin directory. And that's the one that we're interested in, because that's the one that has the compiler. As the compiler, it has the interpreter, it has a bunch of stuff. I mean, not the interpreter, the virtual machine. It has the packager, it has some server tools. It has a whole bunch of tools that you will not find in the regular Java Standard Edition, or also called the JRE, the runtime, which is what typically machines have. So I suggest you download the JDK. That's what Eclipse is going to need. Download the JDK. Once you do that, then if you're on Windows, make sure that you modify your environment variables. So you go into My Computer, you right click on it, go to Properties, in the Advanced tab of your System Properties, you will find the environments variables. Make sure you have a Java Home. Java Home variable is all in uppercase, java underscore home, all in uppercase, and it will be the folder where you install the JDK. So in my case is program files java jdk 16027. Once you have that system variable created, then you can go into your path. That's another system variable. That's the one that it's being used on every single DOS prompt. And I suggest I suggest that you add to your path your Java home so you have to enclose it between percent sign percent Java underscore home percent that this is all Windows instructions of course in Linux it will be something similar in the path and then add the slash bin. That's the folder where I just show you it has all those utility tools. Okay? Semicolon. That's what separates every every um value from from the variable values in the path. And that's it. So what does that allow you to do? It allows you to open a command prompt and say anywhere in your hard drive, say Java dash version, and there it is. I have Java version 16027, standard edition runtime environment. and it knows what I'm talking about. Next, I need you to download, once you have done the JDK, I need you to download Eclipse, if you haven't done so already. Every four, six months, there's a new version of Eclipse. I have downloaded let me see I have downloaded so many different versions oh I seem to have the latest ones If you go into Eclipse.org, you will find all the different um, developer builds. <coughs> now, like I said, every six months they go through different versions. So right now, I believe they're into the Indigo. Yeah, 
indigo and before that it was the Helios and before that it was Galileo and before that it was <laughs> Ganymede <laughs> etc etc so if you download Helios I'm sorry not Helios Indigo I believe that's the version that I have yeah Indigo okay IDE for Java EE developers that's good that's good okay again based on what type of architecture your laptop has you can download the 32-bit or the 64-bit uh, and it's typically a zip file that you unzip and I have always unzipped mine on my C drive and since I have so many different versions of Eclipse, I have Eclipse for PHP, I have Eclipse for Web and JavaScript, I have Eclipse for Java, and I keep them separate because if you put one Eclipse everything, it's going to be a bloated, huge tool. So what I do is I put Eclipse-Java for my Java. I mean, that's what I call the unzipped folder, in other words. All the unzips will be called Eclipse. When you un when you unzip them, no matter what version you download, it will be called Eclipse. So I just rename it Eclipse-Java for Java, Eclipse-JavaScript for HTML and JavaScript, Eclipse-PHP for PHP developers, etc. So this is it. You will get this Eclipse executable, which is your Eclipse. Okay, that's what you will run. <clears throat> when you run it the first time, it will ask you what's your workspace. And the workspace that I'm going to be working off of, it's going to be C column backslash Rapid Java. Rapid Java is the folder that will get created. automatically when you unzip the author's source code. So this source code that it's available under my course content this very first source code textbook source code. Okay? When you download it, it's going to be a zip. When you unzip it on your C drive, it will create a rapid Java folder. So make sure you do that before you run Eclipse the first time. Okay? Any questions so far? Can you keep your whole environment from 3020? Talk to me about your environment from 3020. Is that your Eclipse for JavaScript? You're gonna be missing. You're gonna be missing a few things. Yeah, you can do updates. Like I said, you can create one Eclipse. That is good for PHP, Ruby on Rails, Java, Standard Edition, and Java EE, but it's going to be one huge bloated tool. And typically it tends to start getting really slow and crabby. But yes, you can do that through um, updates. Once you download and set up MySQL, the JDK, 
the author's source code and Eclipse and you open it the first time and create your workspace you're going to need to install new software in Eclipse and I believe I do not have that software so that's a good thing because we're going to download it right now So the what we're going to download is going to be the Spring Framework. Plugin for Eclipse. Spring Framework Plugin for Eclipse. sure what's the state of this plugin since the Spring Framework developers decided to create their own ID. Their ID is called STS, Spring Source Toolkit. STS, Springs Toolkit source tool suite. So we're going to have to download the Eclipse Classic 3.71. So I'm going to download Eclipse SDK 371 Win32. Of course, they also have for Windows 64 bit if you need so, or for Mac, or for Linux. Yep, here it is. It has all the droppings and all the features that we're going to need. Yeah, so why don't we just stick with that? So, forget about what I said about the Eclipse J, I mean the Eclipse EE version. Just go to springsource.com products eclipse-downloads and you will find the Eclipse Indigo Package Downloads the Eclipse Classic 371 and <coughs> if we unzip that one Okay, so I just unzipped it. And I'm going to be calling this one Eclipse Spring. You can keep it Eclipse if you want. That's the beauty of it when you you can have so many different versions of it. You can just download it, unzip it, call it whatever you want. And so we're going right through this the process that you, I hope you guys will go through and complete by next week. Okay? That is, I downloaded Eclipse, unzipped it, put it in my C drive, call it Eclipse Spring, and I'm about to run it for the first time. Eclipse Indigo. This is 
where I ask you select a workspace so I'm just going to select C drive rapid Java this. This is what it looks like the first time that you load it. So you go to the workbench. Let me see if it creates a new project. <laughs> it doesn't have spring. This is the same. This is the same uh, Eclipse that it's available on Eclipse.org, I guess. It doesn't know how to do a Spring project. I'm sorry. The classic one, right? Why would they host the classic Eclipse? Okay, so we're going to install new software. Let me see if the updates for the Indigo will have anything about Spring. Square one. 